Ladies and gentlemen, Octagon MMA brings you Tip Sport Game Changer. After a long renegotiation of a better contract, he finally returns to Octagon, Hatif Moel, who at Octagon 36 defeated Jeremy Kimball and scored his ninth victory in a row. Oh. And scored his ninth victory in a row. Big strikes, this could be it! Oh my goodness! He shall enter his third Octagon match to fight against Brazilian opponent, Wallison Carvalho. Carvalho has fought 20 matches so far, many of them in the light heavyweight bracket, where he managed to defeat the famous Mikhail Ragozin. However, recently, he began to fight in the heavyweight division, where he has now four victories in a row, and Hatif is going to be put to the test before a possible title fight. So here we go, the main card is underway. We welcome Wallison Carvalho from Portugal by way of Brazil, flying that Brazilian flag here now, Luke. I call some of his fights way back, 2016, 2017. He was fighting in Russia in the light heavyweight division, a real patchy part of his career there, taking on some absolute monsters around the world, not just in Russia, but in other promotions as well. Stepped away a little bit from the sport, then took the weight cut out of the equation, stepped up, to heavyweight, has moved some of his camp over to Portugal, and since then, since that time, he is 4-0 and as a heavyweight, undefeated in this bracket. Now, you are someone that's put yourself through hell with those weight cuts. I mean, he's not a big heavyweight, but he is 110, 111 kilos. That's a lot of weight still to get down to light heavyweight. There's been a big difference in this guy's performance, and, you know, he looks comfortable, and he's got nothing to lose, as he is the big underdog here, taking on Hatif Moel. Yeah, huge underdog and like you said I, I have an experience changing weight classes as well uh, not quite moving my camp to Portugal but moving it to Spain so I feel like me and him are brothers <laughs> we, we've pretty much got the same career but no it, it's very difficult when you switch but he's done it phenomenally well you know going 4-0 since that happening obviously comfortable less energy being expended on that weight cut you know not 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 huge for heavyweight but has made it work so uh, he seems very calm as he comes towards the oxygen cage at the moment and, you know, a happy man, and a, it makes a happy fighter, makes a dangerous man. Yeah, he's also got a huge amount of experience with regards to striking as well. You look at that, his amateur boxing record, 41 and 6. Amateur kickboxing record, 38 and 2. Professional kickboxing record, 14 and 2. And those are the skill sets he's leaned heavily on as he's gone into MMA. Nine of his 13 wins are by finish. Eight of those are knockouts, five in the first round. He's also got a submission on there as well, Luke. So he's got the power in the hands to cause a big upset tonight. Yeah, definitely a very dangerous, dangerous man as he crawls into the octagon cage. Takes his moment. I knew he was going to scream, so that's why I was quiet, because I knew that was coming. Wow. He does like that it. every time. I like it. Completely different energy, though, as we switch over to his opponent. Yeah, here he is, boss himself, Hatif Moel, 36 years of age. We were unsure if he was going to compete on this card. He went through a number of negotiations with Octagon. Finally, they got the deal done. And I mean, off the back of his victory at Octagon 36, that against Jeremy Kimball. It, it, we were so hoping that this guy would be part of this heavyweight division. That dream has come true. I know the Polish fighter, Adam Hawash, will be staring, watching this fight with intrigue because he wanted this fight. He wanted this fight for the title. He may get it should Moel be able to move up and through. And Moel, with the skill set he's got and also with the attitude, Luke, he is like an original fighter as far as there's no showmanship with this you get what you see but be careful what you wish for we've seen it at stare downs before where people got a little bit tasty with him and his coach at the ufd gym that fantastic facility over there has said look if, if that happens you've got to be careful because the fight will start there and he doesn't care about getting paid the next day if someone gets in his face he will look to finish it there and then yeah has that aggression with it within him sometimes can be used against him though if he gets drawn out I'm not sure in this case we'll see that from Carvalho. Very calm and, and uh, very professional striker. You know, Atev, just look at the man, a beast of an individual. 
as he gets fast up here. Look at the size of that cauliflower. I thought I had That's, big colleagues. Listen, mate, look, that is a serious one on that left-hand side. And this guy is in serious form as well. Currently on an eight-fight win streak. He hasn't tasted defeat for a very long time. And he doesn't intend to do that tonight. But Vallis and Carvalho, he could certainly upset the party here in Germany. Yeah, and our number one contender in the heavyweight division will be solid if he can manage to convert this into victory. I've been rest assured by Andre Navalny that we will see him fight for a title if he can pass the test that stands in front of him in Carvalho. We see the tail of the tape, weight advantage, high advantage, all in the favor of our favorite Hatef, Boss Moed. Set and ready now for this heavyweight contest. The opening bat here on the main card of Octagon 39, Munich. Get ready. So, ladies and gentlemen, before we start the main card, let me just try to say a few words in uh, German because we want to say how much we are appreciated that we are here in Munich. So, I will try. Noch einmal herzlich willkommen im uh, wunderschönen Münchener Audidom. Bevor die Hauptkarte beginnt, möchten wir uns bei auch dafür bedanken, dass in dieser Arena mit einer MMA-Veranstaltung als erstes ausverkauft habt. Wir sind eine europäische und damit, damit auch eine deutsche Organisation und fühlen uns hier wie zu Hause. Wir werden dieses Jahr vier große Turniere veranstalten und eure Unterstützung wird jedes zu etwas ganz Besonderem machen. Vielen Dank, die Hauptkarte beginnt jetzt. So, now it's time for the main card. Ladies and gentlemen, next bout is heavyweight bout. Three round, five minutes. And the referee in charge is Jan Bobornik. Let me introduce you both fighters and we will start in a blue corner. He is 32 years old, stands 184 centimeter tall, weighing at 108.2 kilos. Represent Libertas MMA and All-Star Premium Team. And the coach in this corner is Sergio Erasto. He has a professional record of 20 fights. 13 wins and only 7 losses. Fighting out of Brazil. Valison Maguila Carvalho. In the red corner, he is 36 years old. Stands 192 centimeter tall, weighing at 118 and a half kilo. Represent UFD gym. And the coaches in his corner are Baba Gnejat and Ivan Hippolyt, Ivan Diakovic. He has a professional record of 17 fights, 13 wins, 4 losses. Representing Neruda Cup team, Tip Sport, and fighting out of the Germany. Number one in heavyweight in Germany, in the red corner. Hatev. Guys, you know what's going on. Go for it hard, but always fair, and I follow all my instructions. If I say stop, you have to stop the action. If you were not touch gloves, do that, and step back to your corner. Best of luck for both of you. And here we go, big boys in the cage now, Brian. <laughs> Heavyweight Havoc about to start. Look at the tip spot odds there, well in the favor of Hatif Moel. What a reception he got from the crowd here in the Audi Dome. Wallace and Carvalho, blue, blue corner. Stepping out, they ran at each other there. Moel in the red corner, black shorts. Yesterday, Moel weighed in about seven, eight kilos heavier than Wallace and Carvalho, and he's got that grappling style. He'll be looking to close that distance. Oh! Yeah, I can hardly even see Carvalho as he's hitting behind the back of Moel as he enters here on this single, has a high crotch. Oh! oh. There, a beautiful high crotch reminded me a little bit of <laughs> a spike there. Oh and my goodness, not quite a spike because he's not holding on to the body, so he let go of the body completely and he landed on the head. Wow, a spike is when you force it down. A spike is highly illegal, 
Uh, but he just literally lifted him and let go. But you can see it. It, it certainly affected him straight away. He grabbed that top of his head. And now he's dealing with this, the, the grappling, that Iranian background as well. Babak Najad, he is the trainer. And over in Iran, I mean, he's based himself now here in Germany. He's been a, welcomed into the arms of the German fans, but his base is Iranian wrestling, and that is as elite as it comes, Luke. Yeah, you know, Iran very well known for their wrestling base and their aggressiveness as well in it when they come here. You see him on the, the tight waist. You can see Carvalho searching for that switch, trying to reach back and grab that leg and try and utilize the hips, but very difficult as you see the hips pinning down that left leg now. Little shots here, but remember, these are big, big men. Yeah, his last fight, Antipo Mel fought Jeremy Kimball. Kimball did so well in the first round to stuff some of those takedowns to avoid a lot of damage. It frustrated Moel, and Moel came out really hard in round two. Got this position early and then moved it into getting the uh, the finish. But now Carvalho having to deal with this. He's trying to build that base. Luke, what's he need to do from here? Yeah, Carvalho doing very well, still staying on that right arm. So you see the right arm and yeah, the arm, posting arm, yeah. The posting arm, and now it's straight. That is what he needs to take away. That is what Moel needs to get. You know, Hatef, if he could attack that arm, it stops him from getting back to his feet. But he's staying on the hips, which was the mistake that allowed, you know, allowed Carvalho to get back to his feet so well. Manages to dig that underhook as well. See if he can utilize his legs here to try and raise up Hatef. Maybe now going for the cross face. Oh, he's trying that. Hands together now here, though, on this high crotch. Look at how hard Valison is working, the big deep breaths he's having to take to try and stay here. And finally, that base is broken once more by Moel. Yeah, Moel changed the wrestling together very well there to move from the high crotch to the single leg back to it and then lifts and gets that takedown. Now attacking the back leg, but oh, maybe hitting the back of the head. Communication there from Jan Verbornik. Yes. Counts them back in and off they go again. But again, still utilizing this, this right arm very, very well. Straight arm on the floor and manages to keep him back to his feet. Now giving it up, but again goes back to it. This right arm is the whole reason he can stay up. If Moel just reached for that arm, he'd be able to take him down instantly. But stuck to the hips and still in a great position. Now he's got one hook, two minutes left in this first round. Complete dominance thus far from Hatev. Yeah, trying to work his way around to the back here. Look at the way he makes him carry his weight. Look at the way he positions the bulk of his weight right on that nape of the back. It's all about the right knee position now for Hatev. If he can, he can separate from the cage, get, manages to stand back up again. But if he can now maybe go for a leg reap or something on the outside with that right leg. Good work here from Carvalho to get back to his feet. Needs to dig that underhook again. Has space. Hatif, Moel. If he can turn the hips here, he might be able to escape. There's an opening. One minute, 20 seconds now, still Moel trying to keep hold of this grip, trying to work his man down. And maybe right in front of us here now in the commentary box, but maybe a better job staying on the fence and trying to escape as he gets out. Beautiful work from Carvalho. Now let's see if he can capitalize on the space oh. as he comes forward. Big shots at one, two there. Backs Moel out, a good dig to the body as well from Valentin Carvalho. Yeah, Carvalho loose on the feet and throwing very effectively. That's something you don't see so much at heavyweight. That's why he's not a big heavyweight, but he's so fluid and moves so well. And releases that strike to the outside, then the inside of that lead leg now steps in with the upper. Good work here from Ballison. Yeah, you um, can see Moelle, he's almost a bit shook by it. Couldn't get that takedown, and now having to deal with his striking as he swings a big overhand right of his own. How loose is Vallis and Carvalho, all those years of experience. And also looking pretty free. Oh, there's a cup shot. I didn't, oh. even, I didn't even see it. I was just mesmerized by the head movement of Carvalho, and he made Moel slip almost <laughs> from wow. that fancy footwork, but somehow got punched in the cup. Yeah, as he zigged and zagged, he came back the other way, and Moel almost looked at when to grab him. Watch, now he'll, he'll laterally move the other way. And boom, there you go, just a little right hand right on the cup, and it was the noise that it made that let me know that that was a, a, a cup shot to start with. I mean, you say a little right hand, but I'm sure they're double XL. <laughs> Back on his feet, moving on is Carvalho. 20 seconds left in this opening round. I've been very impressed so far as he lands that low kick. And for me, the, the most impressive is how fresh he looks after dealing with that amount of pressure and grappling from Hatif Moel. Again, again. Boy, he staggers in there with just a stiff shot. Now that lead leg of Hatif Moel. I'll tell you a little story, Luke. 
Hattie come out limping back to the cage there. He used to work on the doors over there in Frankfurt. Sorry, uh, over there in Dusseldorf. And at one point, he got shot, shot in the leg. They've never removed the bullet. They've never removed that bullet. And now you see Valentin Carvalho targeting the outside lead leg. Do you think he knows that story? I, I, I doubt he even noticed. <laughs> <laughs> he didn't even blink. What was that noise? Yeah, I mean, great work in this first round from, from Carvalho. Done extremely well. We see some highlights here of him landing shots. When it was on the feet, he looked super impressive. Here's the high crotch take down from Moel. See, not quite a, a spike, just let go in time, but had a lot of control, but was dealt well with by uh, Carvalho, and then he looked very dangerous on the feet. It was a, it, uh, it's that phrase we use in England, it was a game of two halves, right? Against the cage, Hatif Moel was imposing on the feet, though. There was danger from Valison, and the most dangerous thing is the confidence he went back to his corner with because he believes now, he truly believes. He stopped multiple takedowns, and that was obviously the question, and now look, comes out. See the confidence in him as he's moving forward. And I felt like, you know, Moel, he felt the shots. He, he seemed a bit shook at the end of that first round. Oh, he's targeting that leg again, inside and out. Long jab from Valison Carvalho. Really nice kick to the liver there. Just fast, oh. speedy as a heavyweight. Ho, ho, ho. Here we go. And that shift since he's made it. We've seen a big difference in the career in the green patch off. Oh, Valencia Carvalho, but now Moel looking for that takedown again. Now needs to get that right knee. If he's gonna, this is gonna be his game. He has the weight on the hips, but if he wants to make this effective, he needs to stop that hand, that right hand that still he's using as a post. Now using the left hand as well. Or put that right knee, separate the cage and the hips so he can't get back to the feet. And that'll allow him to get hooks. Very similar to, you know, very famous fight where Khabib beat Conor McGregor. It was in exactly this position. You can put that right knee, separate from the hips and that's how you can utilize it to take the back and really make this a dangerous position at the moment it's just a waste of energy Carvalho is just resting 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 waiting for his moment and getting back to his feet I mean those knees don't help they hurt <laughs> they will hurt especially right to the hamstring yeah. can be effective too digging into that sciatic nerve but he needs to stack Carvalho over the top of that right hand so he needs to push him forwards if that there there he did it well now he's lacing that leg up as well. That left leg of Carvalho. Yeah, that's a good stop, stop, you know, it can, can hold the position so he can land a little bit of shots and soften his opponent a little bit, but it's not gonna, not gonna get him the end result that he wants. It's just a stalling mechanism, really. Maybe can put a little pressure on that knee. Well, especially the weight that, you know, the weight these two guys are at. And he's using that forehead a lot in this position as well. Now Carvalho. Doing well to get back to his feet. Needs to be careful on the takedown now. Turns back into his man. Look That's at the very corner there. Very well to get that underhook on the left side. Digging now on the right as well. Gets it. Both underhooks, double underhooks. This is great work from Wallace and Carvalho. And again, again. Gets a round of applause from you. That's a rare thing, Luke. Well, I'm impressed <laughs> with his takedown defense, especially with the size difference. It's very, very impressive. You know, there are a lot of technical things there, but Carvalho is really, you know, Showing an elite level of takedown defense against the, you know, the Iranian German. Oh, big swings, and maybe a change of tactic for Moel because the takedowns on the fence are not helping him. Oh, Moel responded to that low calf kick you saw. Oh, this is nice. Now in on this single. See, for me, he's gone to this single leg multiple multiple times turned into a high crotch almost got a takedown but never quite got it so i would switch to a double here. personally i would try and take that double leg it's available look for a leg reap try and change up these attacks because carvalho has obviously drilled this position extremely well and it's very very difficult to take down and he's using a lot of energy again again another oh, high crotch oh, but again straight to the exact same position doesn't really convert it doesn't score any points, not, not making much damage. Nice here with the controlling the ankle, though. Needs to switch it up and go to that hand. If he took that touch, that hand, he'd convert this takedown. One minute, 30 seconds now left in this second round. A really fascinating heavyweight match. Not the way anybody saw it going. I'll be interested to see the tip spot odds. Yeah, I believe it was a five to one underdog for Carvalho. As, with, he, right. as he's trying to get this Kimura trap here. Or oh, if he can use this to spin out, a move I used to love 
when I was fighting is now you could use that left leg to flip his opponent and roll backwards. I mean, a heavyweight, I've never seen it done. But has a good grasp on that Kimura trap. He's going to try it. Needs to be careful of that high crotch because you can still get high crotch in this position. Drops down to his knee now. Listening to his corner, you can see there's a real good relationship between those two. He's, he's waiting for his moment here. He's going to try and bring this right hit. Oh, he's giving up on it. He's trying to push the head. Elbows here would be good. Oh, he gets yeah. down again and oh. thrown down. Probably the, the most convincing takedown. Hips are off the fence now. For me, the, Carvalho. The, for me, it was the response of Carvalho before he's bounced back up. There was more tiredness there. Didn't quite react, and Hatif Moel basically fell on top of him. Yeah, maybe, maybe weighing on him a little bit. Carvalho still trying to work his way back up. Moel now. Content holding this position. He's tied that wrist up now. Hammer fist coming in and down. Yeah, but you've seen, like I said, um, like you said, the conditioning maybe now of Carvalho. A little bit less explosive getting back to his feet. Even there, as the round ends, he stumbles back to his corner. Okay, giving a bit of a, a bit of energy to the crowd, but looks very tired now. So there we have two rounds down. And we will take a look at those tip spot odds. Hatif Moel finishing strong, though, in that round, Luke. Yeah, an intriguing round and an intriguing fight. They've been going back and forth. It's hard to say who's winning uh, how it's viewed. But when, you know, when Carvalho gets the opportunity on the feet, he's extremely dangerous. And Hatif has done well, but he hasn't looked like finishing the fight at all. He's just controlled. Here, he went a little bit wild, but it was just to open up this takedown attempt. Yes, he's lifted and dumped. Carvalho multiple times, but that's it, really. He hasn't done much else in these positions, apart from pepper him a little bit. And once again, I was just looking at the corner there of uh, Valas and Carvalho. They were really getting him to stare across the cage. They think that the tiredness, the fatigue will be affecting Hatif Moel more. Yeah, needs to bounce on his feet and, and stay off that fence now. Create that distance, does Carvalho. He needs to utilize this and try and keep it on the feet, because once it hits the cage, Things are getting stalled out. Here we go, round number three in this heavyweight contest. Oh. Oh, he comes up high with that kick. And there's the tip spot odds. Carvalho coming down still. Moel out in front. Oh, nice, nice combination there. Yeah, now it's heating up. Hand. Boy, big uppercut. This is the fight that he wants, that Carvalho wants. Oh, but so that's up for that double. That's the mistake you can make, right? You think, right, I'm going to stand and bank. And then Moel uses that to open up the takedown and gets it, Luke. I mean, I might have said in the second round that he should switch the single to the double and he would convert it. Maybe the corner heard me, maybe they told him. But great conversion there <laughs> for that double leg. And now we see exactly what Moel wants, to be on top in this ground and power position. Extremely effective from here he is. He needs to see how, much he, how long he can keep him on the mat. Still on the fence there is Carvalho. Maybe he can explode up and get, get back to that you know, kneeling position that he wants to try and stand back to his feet. Pitches away with the legs. Yeah, he's trying, he's trying. And what he's done so far over two rounds is avoid major damage. But now in a bit more of a tough position, but gets manages to get to that turtle, get that knee to the fence. Great work from Carvalho. But looks tired now, his demeanor is tired, his head is low. Needs to get that head high, yeah. needs to lift it up. Get that head a lot higher and then he, you can see it in his demeanor. Jan asking for yeah. more. Yeah, the referee wants more. He allowed a couple of positions to carry on in round number two. But he's going to itch for one. Good work from Carvalho yet again. Yeah, very, very good work. Tired man in there now in the third round. 118 plus kilos on top of him. And manages to get back up. And effective knees now, though, from Hatev. This is the part of the fight I like to see. This is it deep now, deep wars. Who's got it inside them? Carvalho now trying to escape again. You don't, you very, 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 very rarely see a heavyweight fight go to these sort of deep waters and then both oh. still look in good condition. Both of them look great. They look, they're still, they're still working yeah. the deep in on this double leg now. Carvalho almost escaped the grip there before he's pushing that head down, almost stepped outside, but Moel. On him like a wet blanket, step back in. Should maybe be looking for elbows now. Rather than a little mouthpiece comes out, maybe looking for a breather. Gets taken down with that double. Yeah. And waiting to put the, uh, the mouthpiece back in. 
Short shots coming in now from uh, Hatif Moel. Two minutes, 25 seconds left. Carvalho looks like he's going to get back to his feet, Luke, again. Yeah, he's done extremely well doing that. Ref now just popping the mouthpiece back in. Poor Carvalho. As we enter two minutes and ten seconds left. And Jan Vabornik picking that moment so he didn't stifle the uh, the advantage or the get-up uh, attempt from Moel, from Carvalho. A good head position again from Moel. And it is a grinding head position, right? That has got to be a nightmare. Short shots under the armpit as well. From Great Matt work Moel. from Carvalho, though, to free the legs up. Now all he needs to do is pop up. He just needs to get up. Does it very well on those hips, get that head high. I'm almost cornering now. I'm so impressed with his output. <laughs> Great work to get back to his feet. Maybe he'll move from Portugal to Spain following this fight, Luke. I mean... <laughs> He could, but I'm never in the gym anymore, so it'd probably be pointless. Manages to, to work around to the back. That's what I was saying about that right knee. Now he has him separated from the cage. In a much more effective position now is Moel. And it, uh, managed oh, to get yes. that right leg deep. And you can see now the damage is starting to build up on uh, Wallace and Carvalho. And could even put that right hook in if he wanted to. Gives it up and lets Carvalho back to his feet. Being on this double has been way more effective since he switched to this grip underneath the hips now. Any time he can get this takedown, whenever he wants it, he just needs to drag the legs back. Carvalho now starting to wilt under this pressure. You can see it. You can see it in his eyes, the demeanor. This is a draining sort of fight, right, Luke? Mentally and physically. Yeah, definitely, definitely physically. I mean, he's got up and many, 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 many times deep in the third round. Only 35, 36 seconds left. And he's still getting, you know, Ridden it was the word I was going to use, but he just is getting We'll take it. We'll, yeah, take, we'll it. take it. I thought maybe I shouldn't say that, but okay. <laughs> you can't use it often when talking about <laughs> Hatif Moel, but right now it kind of fits. Yeah, he's just stuck to him this entire fight and been very, very effective in doing so, just smothering. And you can see it really wearing now on Carvalho. Yeah, and this, this fight looks like it will go the distance. Moel, should the judges tip it his way, which I surely see them doing that, then there is a potential, Luke, a potential. Then in Oberhaus, the event they've announced, we could have a heavyweight title fight. We still need to crown the heavyweight king. And that puts, surely puts Moel up there in front, right? Yeah, I mean, that's not the way you want to win a fight to get to a title, but that is his style. He's very effective at it, and it's a very effective style. So, you know, big, big man, very, very strong, pinning him up against the fence. I believe he's done enough. We'll see what the judges think. Uh, but I was extremely impressed oh. by Carvalho. The much smaller man, very athletic, very light on his feet, moved very, very well, was exciting to watch. And, Caused you know, problems, Luke. That's the main thing, right? It wasn't just, wasn't just held and pinned by this Iranian grappler, no, but he, also he, caused problems. Did a fantastic job, and when the space was there, looked very, very effective on the feet. So whatever the result is and whatever happens, I, I'm looking forward to seeing both of these men come back. We see a few of the highlights yeah. now from the third round. And it, it heated up a little bit more early on. They were exchanging. And then this double leg shot changed the game as Moel then started converting takedowns and getting it where he wanted it on the mat finally. And from this moment onwards was in complete control of that third and final round. There we go. This is the stats. Uh, yeah, significant strikes, punches, all in favor of Hatif Moel. And the takedowns, eight takedowns there. Total control, but this one has gone the full 15 minutes, so we will need the judges' scorecards. And we will get set to announce this one. Yeah, taken down eight times in that fight, but got to his feet eight times, or maybe seven, uh, I believe. So great work from him getting up and a good show of respect from the two men. However, this result has happened. We will find out now as Mr. Andre Novotny enters the cage to make it official. Ladies and gentlemen, let's see how the judges score this fight. All three judges score this fight 30 27 in the favor of the winner, which is coming from the red corner, Hatev Boss Moel.
Latif. Herzlichen Glückwunsch zu deinem nächsten Sieg. Du bist jetzt 3 zu 0 bei Octagon. Das ist ziemlich beeindruckend. Hast alles weggehauen, was dir vor die Fäuste kam. Was hast du jetzt als nächstes vor? Dankeschön. Das war ein sehr starker Gegner. Und ich habe nicht so gedacht, der ist so stark. Aber der war sehr gut. Und ich habe mein Alles gegeben. Okay, so first of all, he said, thank you everybody. He now had a very tough opponent and he didn't think that he was so hard to fight against, so hard to wrestle, but in the end, he got the job done. Okay, Hatev, heute haben wir eine weitere dominante Performance von dir gesehen. Könntest du dir vorstellen, gegen jemanden, der dich herausgefordert hat, um den Titel zu kämpfen? Was hast du als nächstes für Pläne? Ich kämpfe nächste Kampf bei äh, in Oberhausen, ich ticke Kampf. Okay. Und für mich ist es egal, wer kommt, ich kämpfe gegen jede. Ich bin bereit für jede. Okay, his next fight is gonna be in June in Oberhausen for the next MMA event in Germany. He wants to fight for the title for sure. It doesn't matter to him who is coming, who, is, who his opponent is gonna be. He's gonna be definitely ready. Also, klingt das gut, ein Titelkampf für Hatif Moel. Wir sehen uns bei, äh, bei, bei Oberhausen, bei äh, nächsten Veranstaltung. Okay, wir sehen uns in Oberhausen. Vielen Dank, Katif Moy. Bis zum nächsten Mal. Ladies and Gentlemen, Octagon MMA brings you Tip Sport Game Changer.